you hear me, brother? So just to provide more clarity, to add on to what the brother was saying, right? So us teaching the nations the laws on how to serve God properly is what's going to heal them. The same way that that crumb that that woman begged for and acknowledged that she's going to get from her master, it healed her daughter. The laws is what's going to heal the nations, but that's going to come from the Israelites, right? Because we're going to be the ones to be perfected first upon the arrival of Christ. He's going to give us the new covenant, right? Or the new testament, which, you know, was shed initially by his blood so that we can be redeemed. Let me get the, uh, let me get the new testament, new covenant, right? Hebrews 8 and 8. Because Christianity, modern Christianity, they tell you that the new covenant is for everybody. Right, that was said for the Israelites. Yes. Real name Yahweh Shah. Yes. And he resurrected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Facts. Most definitely. He he is the redeemer and the savior of the nation of Israel. That's right. That's right. We pray, right? That's right. Right. That's right. God didn't say you have to make great memories. There's not enough. There's not enough imagery in the Bible that you come up with something. At all. At all. At all. Check it out. So I'm gonna show you who the. I'm gonna show you who the new covenant is for. Right. And let me get Romans nine as well. We 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 gonna build you up, brother. Hey, y'all gotta listen. Y'all gotta listen. Watch this, brother. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant, a new covenant with the house of Israel. With the house of Israel. So the Lord, this is New Testament. The Lord said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And with the house of Judah. And with the house of Judah. So the new covenant, according to Jeremiah 31, and according to Hebrews 8 and 8, the new covenant was only for the nation of Israel, right? Keep going. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, right? Okay. Because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. After what days? After, after those, those days. days. Right, so after those days, meaning when Yahweh Shai, who the Lord calls Jesus, comes back, He's going to deliver us like we read in Isaiah 14. We're going to be set back in our own land. And then in that day, the Lord is going to put the new covenant within us. With the new covenant, it's going to tell you what the new covenant is. Go ahead. I will put my laws in their mind. I will do what? I will put, put their laws in their mind. I will put my laws in their mind. So the new covenant, it comes with the Lord putting the laws, the Torah, within us. So that we don't have to go by, you know, the letter anymore. It will be doing it naturally, right. perfectly, and thereby no more dying. Right. Because the wages of sin is what? Death. So if we're not sinning because we're keeping the law perfectly, we're going to be living for it forever. So, you know, Christians, they'll say that we're already in a new covenant. Well, how are we dying, right? Why do we got to go by the letters to? Yeah, it started, you know, it uh, initialized it. Yeah, right. So so where a testament is, exactly, where a testament is, there has to be the blood of the testator. And, and that, that that's what final, or not finalizes, but starts the covenant. We're not in the new covenant yet, but he said the blood so that the new covenant is accessible through him. So whenever he comes and saves us, and he fulfills everything, like it says in Matthew 5, so all be fulfilled, then we'll be able to enter into the new covenant because there's things that has to happen before we can enter into the new covenant. Prophecies that have to be fulfilled still, right? But keep going on that. And I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man. It's like, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor. And we're still teaching right now. So this is how we know for a fact we're not fully in the new covenant yet. Right, until Christ comes back, that's why I said after those days, and then we'll be fully in the new covenant. So the Israelites upon the arrival of Christ will be perfect, but the nations, because the nations, they're still in idolatry. They still don't have the knowledge of Yahweh, the one true living God. They worship Krishna, Allah, Buddha, all these other false man-made religions and idols. They don't know about what God requires, the one true God, the God of the Israelites. So that's why we just went over it. That's why we're going to be the ones to teach or be the lights unto the Gentiles. 
right? And this is also putting, you know, emphasis and, you know, realization that we are the true Israelites of the Bible. Because right. the people over in the land right now, they're not doing nothing but killing innocent babies. You understand? So we the Jews, like the Lord said in Revelation 2 and 9 and 3 and 9. And so we the ones out here bringing a life and the light unto our people so that we can bear that light to be that light to the Gentiles, which will be, you know, fully realized whenever Christ returns. But I'm going to hit you with one, right? Because the Lord is not unjust, you know, to forget what happened to his people. Right? Like the Lord told us, I believe in the book of Zechariah, that he that touches us, touches the apple of his eye. Right? Because we are his children. Deuteronomy 8 and 5 says that he deals with us as with sons. Right? Roughly paraphrasing. So the Lord isn't going to forget about what has happened to us. Chiefly Esau. Right? You know about Jacob and Esau? In Genesis 25, when it talks about Isaac and he had twins, I mean, Rebecca was, uh, 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 she was carrying twins in her womb. Two men or people diverse from one another, right? So the feud between the so called black, Hispanic, and Native Indians and, and the so called white race, it goes back, you know, almost five, six thousand years ago, man. During the time of Jacob. You understand? We are the sons of Israel, they are the sons of Esau. Now when you understand how the Lord feels about Esau and the Edomites and the prophecies that pertain to their people, hey bro, it's without a doubt that when the Bible's real, they're the Edomites and you know, they're gonna have to pay for the crimes of their forefathers like we've got to pay for the crimes of ours. So, hey, go ahead. Right. No, they're not. They're not Israelites. Right. You talking about Simon the Zealot? When you go into the Greek for that word Canaanite, it's Zealot. So, so it was just a mistransliteration. Right. So he's not a Canaanite. You can, you can, you, you can go into the Greek, the etymology, and, 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 and I'm gonna hit something. Right. This is the thing. This is the truth part because the word Canaanite is in that land. Yeah, because 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 the, the, the land of Israel, the land of Israel was originally the land of what? Canaan, and Israel did not kill all of the Canaanites, and that's one of the reasons why the Lord, you know, that, no, 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 no. Again, when you go into the Greek for the word Canaanite, when it says Simon the Canaanite, it's not talking about a ethnic Canaanite. It just means Zelite, right? Right? It was just a mistransliteration. That's the reason for it. This, this the book of, this the book of Zechariah, chapter fourteen and verse number. That's right, and this is a precept for that. I'm gonna show you real quick. Hold on, let me read it. Right, this is the book of Zechariah, chapter fourteen and verse twenty. It says, I'm gonna start at nineteen. Well, I'm gonna start at twenty. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea. Every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come take of them and see if they're in. And in that day, there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Right, so you got to ask yourself a question. Why would Christ select an individual that can't even enter into the house of the Lord to be a part of his uh, apostleship? Or if it's tutelage, right? So I got to pull it up right here for you, brother. And it's not a mistransliteration. That word, uh, uh. The way I see it, it's called the No, that's the word in the Greek. It's Canaan, Canaanitis, right? Canaanitis. That word means zealous, literally. So like, like I said, bro. Canaanite, zealous. The actual definition, zealous. The Greek word is Canaanitis, which means zealous. So when it, just like in the book of Acts chapter 13, it says Simon, right, called nigger, right? Is he, was he, you know, why, why did they call him nigger? Because the Greek word is nigger, which means black. It says he was a black man. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, if, if you're right, if you're reading it in the Greek, but it, like when you're talking about what the brother just read in the book of Zechariah, 
this Old Testament, this was written in Hebrew, right? The New Testament that we have today was written in Greek, right? So, yeah, you know, exactly. And if that was the case too, then Yahweh Shah, who the world calls Christ, he wouldn't have called that Canaanite woman a dog. He wouldn't have ignored that woman. He would, he would have dealt with her as an Israelite. You know, see what I'm saying? Like, even even the Samaritan woman, right? Because let's get let's get Acts one and six real quick. No. Well, okay, brother. So we got to understand the Gentile, the Gentile again, right? They're, the brother already broke it down, but there's two types of Gentiles in the New Testament. You have ethnic Gentiles, meaning a heathen or one of another nation. And then you have Israelite Gentiles, meaning Israelites that may be in another land or conform completely to heathenistic customs, right? When you even go, you can go into the law, into the Old Testament and see that they were even considering Israelites out of the land strangers, right? So it's not, it's not an uncommon thing to call our people strangers if they're not in the land of Israel, right? So watch this. We're going to go into the New Testament, into the Acts, and then Acts of the Apostles. We're going to see who the apostles thought the kingdom of heaven is for, bro. Right? This is the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So the apostles, this is after Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. He's appearing himself into the apostles, and they're asking him, Are you finally going to restore the kingdom to us, to Israel? Go ahead. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. All right, so there wasn't time. Now let's go to Acts 2 because you, this, this right here was such a powerful, you know, uh, just a powerful verse, a powerful passage, I think went over your head because it, it literally explains to you how there are Jews, devout men, dwelling in every nation and speaking the tongue of these nations as well, right? That's important to understand when, and also give me 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Luke, Matthew 4 and 17. Oh yeah, 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 wait, let's keep that. Let's keep that. The Galilee of the Gentiles. We're gonna get to the point right here. It's the book of First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. No, no. This first Corinthians. More than Corinthians. Are they Israelites? Or are they Gentiles? They're Gentiles. In the land of Corinth, which is a Greek province. Okay? So this is Corinthians now. Now let's see what Paul says about these Corinthians or these Gentiles. Let's read it. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren. Wait, wait, wait. Who? Moreover, brethren. So he's acknowledging these Gentiles or these Corinthians to be his brethren. Let's keep going. I would not that ye should be ignorant. How that all, all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the seas and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So now Paul is saying that his brothers, he said all of our fathers, Pass through the sea. What sea is he talking about? The Red Sea. The Red Sea after they passed through the, uh, the sea. The Exodus, right? He said, All our, our fathers passed through the sea and were baptized into Moses. But he's talking to who? He's Corinthians. Letting you know that just because they're in Corinth, in Rome, in Ephesus, doesn't automatically make them an ethnic Gentile. Because he's, he's saying that these Corinthians are his brothers and we have the same forefathers. We were the ones that walked through the sea with Moses. That's what he's telling them. Now go to uh, uh, chapter 12. Let me get the book of James 1. In 1. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. I mean verse 1. So like verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. You what? Ye were Gentiles. Now, now Paul is saying you know that you were Gentiles. Before I met you, y'all were Gentiles. How is that? How can you change from a Gentile to a non-Gentile? 
Watch this. Keep going. Carry the weight unto these dumb idols. Wait, wait, what? Carry the weight unto these dumb idols. So when you're carried away from knowing that you're an Israelite, knowing you got to keep God's laws and statutes and his commandments, and you're carried away, what does it mean to be carried away? Taken, taken, and enslaved. The Lord said he's going to scatter us among the nations. He said you were carried away to dumb idols. The same way that we were carried away, and now we're serving white Jesus, Islam, you know, Rastafarianism, uh, 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 so-called science, falsely so-called, right? But let's keep going. Even as you were led, wherefore I give you understanding, so I can understand. So we're just kind of adding on, adding on. What was that? Yeah, let's get James. This is the book of James, chapter 1 and verse 1. Who, do you know who James is? One of the apostles. The Lord's brother, right? Christ's brother. James and Jude were the Lord's brothers, and they were also, you know, among the apostles. Go ahead. James 1 of 1. James, a servant of Yahweh, and of our Lord of Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, to the twelve tribes. Wait, to who? To, to the, the twelve, twelve tribes, tribes, which are scattered abroad. Which are what? Which are scattered, scattered abroad. abroad. Amen. That is plain upon tables. James said that his letter is to a specific audience to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. So, if you want to be very technical, if you're not among the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad, you don't have no business even reading this. That's like me trying to deliver a letter to you. Next thing you know, my next door neighbor open, tearing it up and they're not minding their business. They're all up in our business. He's talking to us. And as a matter of fact, all the apostles are talking to us. Let me get first Peter. Alright? Alright? This is the book of first Peter, chapter 1 and verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Amasiah Yahweh Shad, to the strangers. Right? To the strangers. Now one might say, see, he's talking about the other nations, the strangers. But like I said, Israel, even a poor time in the Old Testament were called strangers. He's talking to Israelites. He's gonna prove it. Go ahead. Scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So we gotta break it down. Oh, it's probably about one o'clock. Probably about one o'clock. Yeah. So let, let's let's break this down. The Lord said that He's talking to the scattered, and then He lists a bunch of nations. So we know that Israel is scattered. Even when you yeah, get that uh, Israel minor left, I think it's 43, right? So the Lord, or, or when you go into the Greek word for that word scattered, you know what it is? Diaspora, the dispersion, diaspora. Now what people were known to go through a diaspora or a diaspora? Us, the transatlantic slave trade, the Silk, the silk Road slave trade, the Sub-Saharan slave trade, and many others, right? Israel minor left, I believe it's uh 43. Let me get let me get let me get let me get Oh yeah, it might be 44. 44 is much. Or 45. 45 45 and 4. Yeah. Wow. This is the book of Isaiah to the Because he also said, elect according to the foreknowledge of God. So these strangers are amongst the elects. Okay, go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. Right? That's uh, 43. What? Right? And it says, Even call thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun. 45 and 4? Yeah, that's, that's, that's 45. Jacob, my servant. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 45 and 4. So, so he said, Israel, mine elect, man. Israel is the elect of God. So that's who Paul, I mean, that's who Peter was writing to. Paul was writing to the Corinthians. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah first born. So, because your first born is your special child. Your firstborn is a special because who, who else did he call his firstborn? 
He called Ifa his firstborn. Was Ifa the firstborn or was Manessa? Manessa was. He also called Christ his firstborn of the dead. But was he the first pe first person to ever come back from the dead? No. No, he wasn't. No, no, no. As far as like. Elijah raised a man from the dead. Elijah raised a man from the dead. Elisha, his bones raised a man from the dead. So, uh, uh, Paul, Paul raised a man from the dead. So, the, when, he, when it says the firstborn, he's just putting firstborn emphasis on us. He said that in Exodus. He said that in Exodus. Exodus 1 and 22, that's what he said. Exodus. I'm moving dead. Really, all, all that's talking about? Yeah. Yeah, again. All, all that's really talking about, though, is he is the one that's, that has received life to bring life. He is the first one of the dead. He is no other person that's come back from the dead is going to do what Christ did. He, he's, he's, you know. Special. That's why even Christ said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, right? So, come on. So, let's get Romans 9. I'm going to get you one more heavy hitter, and then, you know, you can go, you can stay, ask questions, whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. That's 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 my that's story. Story. Definitely a story. You got a flyer? You got a flyer? No. Let's get the brother a flyer real quick. For sure. Yeah, right. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 1. Hey, man. Hey, you got to get down, man. You got to get down. You got to get down, man. You got to get through. For sure. Right, so we'll, we'll get some commandments a little bit. Right. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. So this is Paul, once again, he's speaking to the Romans. But let's see what Paul got to say about these Romans. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost right. that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Right. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. Uh -huh. For my brethren, uh -huh. my, my brethren, brother. uh -huh. my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Oh, he's so sorry and so sad about the estate of his people that he's saying, man, I wish that I could have been the one to die on the cross for my people, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Go ahead. Who are Israelites? Who? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption. What is the adoption? The adoption, it, it, it has to do with salvation. The, ado the adoption is us being brought back to the Father. Because we were cast away. Because we were cast away. So just letting you know, Paul's letting you know that the only people that can be adopted back to the Father are the Israelites. Keep going. And the glory right. and the covenants. Both the covenants are for the Israelites. And the giving of the law. Right. And the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and who concerning the flesh Christ came. Amen. Paul broke it down playing upon tables right there. He said, man, I wish I could have been the one to die for these Israelites, man. Everything pertains to them, they get the adoption the glory, the covenants, the service of God, because a part of the gospel are the Israelites serving the Lord while the nations serve us, while they're learning how to serve the God. That's why the Lord said in the book of Isaiah 61 and 5 that we're going to be called trees of righteousness, priests and ministers of our God, roughly paraphrased, by doing the actual service of the Lord. But, so, that's the point. Romans 9 is just a, a hard-headed chapter. You know what I'm saying? Letting you know that everything in the Bible is about us, man. It's our history. One to seven. One to seven. Yes. One to seven. Psalm 50 and verse uh, 5. Check this out. This is Romans 1 and 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. So. The Bible so called, like you said, we got to go precept upon precept. He said the ones that are beloved of God in Rome and the ones that are called to be saints in Rome. Not everybody was called to be a saint. Let me get Psalm 148, which one? 14, 148, 12, 11. Right. Watch this. We're going to show you who the saints are. 
This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together. What did the Lord say? Gather my saints together uh -huh. unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. He said, gather, gather uh, my saints together, those that have made a sacrifice. Or the, read that against the light. I don't want to hear it. Verse 5 from the top. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And we're the ones that made the covenant with the, with the Lord by sacrifice. You read that in the book of Exodus chapter 24, right? Those are the saints. Go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7. It says... Time. Starting at verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy God. But even when you go into that word holy, it means sanctified. Right? Which makes you a saint. Go ahead. Yahweh thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Yahweh did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye are more in number than any people for ye are for you were the fewest of all people but because Yahweh loved you and because he will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers has Yahweh brought you out of a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the bondman for the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt all right so the Lord, he told us that the Israelites are holy, special, chosen, and above everybody else. And he also said he didn't choose it because we're the greatest nation as far as the number goes, right? Like the Chinese, they got billions of people. You know, the so-called white people, they have, you know, hundreds of millions of people. We don't really got that too, uh, like that many people as far as demographic goes. Our nation started with 70 souls. 70 souls that entered into Egypt. And from that, we have an innumerable multitude now, right? Exactly. Exactly. What you got? Come, on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's get some. Man, the whole Bible code, bro. The whole Bible code. When you read it, from the understanding that, like, like I said, you know, there is a order to prophecy. Everything has to happen in its set time. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 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 And he, they even said, Paul, art thou, art thou that Egyptian? Right? They said that to Paul. Well, we know the ancient Egyptians look dark as hell. Right? Uh, read that song for you. This is Psalms 148 and 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. All right, so Paul, he was talking to the Rome, the Romans that were called to be saints, which are the children of Israel. Not these damn Romans like Titus Flavius, man. Not these damn Romans like them, uh, uh, Batiatis, that damn, uh, you know what I'm saying? He, he was not dealing with them, man. They're over there doing chariot races and freaking off the damn uh, brothels, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's not who Paul was talking to. All right, Paul was talking to the saints, the children of Israel that were in Rome. All right, yeah. All right. 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 Who were the people you know what I'm saying? Sold to? It says will be sold out to I was just telling Brother Eliezer, man, how they're not watching out here, huh? But we finna wrap it up because how much money y'all watching y'all side? Say, boom yourself, 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 Kingdom coming in a day, living water, that's the wave. Yeah. Treasure storing up the pay, wisdom sharpening our ways. Raise it, raise it, watch it blaze. Narrow road, that's the lane. Put this truth in their face while I'm staying out the way. 
was a rat in the race. Now I do it for his name. Yeah, how will we let it rain? Comp it up for the pain. Know the truth never change. I'm just praying for his grace. Judgment coming any day. Never knew how it came. You can go against the grain. We gon' do what it say. On delay, no delay. About commands, no debate. Lift my brothers like a crane. Cause I just wanna see you up and never ever flop again. I want the land and the lake, but rather see my people safe. I got used to the rain, yeah, I was shot for the faith All this faith in my face, I can do anything Never tell you that you can't, a man is what he think Precision vision with the aim, prophecy dropping, they can't stop Yeah, you can watch, but you can't clock I'm in the night like a great box Double cup up, please, they can't cop Brother, I love you, you're not my op Sister, I love you, you got my heart You know the light rose up out the dark Hey, you know a blaze start from a spark Hey, Saint Lee Ain't for the weak, with the fleet Came for the kingdom, prince of peace Pray that I meet you, mention me Know that I need you Yeah, how will he tower the eagle? Gon' top of they tower, it's feeble We push repentance to the people These bones, they dry like the seagram Saint Lee, and it ain't for the weak With the fleet, and we came for the kingdom, prince of peace Pray that I meet you, mention me Know that I need you Yeah, how will he tower the eagle? Gon' top of they tower, it's feeble We push repentance to the people these bones, they dry like the seams.